Good evening and praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. How are you doing this evening? Blessed? Amen. Amen. Well, we'd like to welcome you here to Presence of the Lord Christian Church in Corona, California. I'm Pastor David Martinez, and we're excited to be here tonight. We are excited because, um, you know, we, we always try to make sure that we come expecting of the Lord. And, you know, when we say expecting, I, 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 I say that frequently, but, but, you know, there's nothing wrong. With, with coming to the Lord expecting. And as long as we're not saying, well, you need to give me this, and you need to give me this, and you need to give me this, expecting something that's good for us. Sometimes it's taking things away. Sometimes it's giving us things. But, you know, um, I'd rather be in no other place than here, being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So for those of you who are at home watching on either Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you this evening, Lord God. Oh, Father, you are such an amazing God, and I, I bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We lift you up, Lord God. Father, this evening, when I say that we come expecting, your word says that your mercies are new every morning, and the day's not over yet. And so I'm excited to see what you have for each and every one of us. I thank you in advance for the healings. I thank you in advance for, for the message that you give to our hearts, not necessarily out of the speaker, but what you give to our hearts. I thank you so much, Lord God, in advance for touching us and loving us and allowing us into your presence. And Father, tonight, 
we just pray, Lord God, that the worship that rises up from this place is pleasing to you. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Stand with me if you can. Brother Joe. Amen. Good evening. Let's praise the Lord this evening. Um, just real quick, as Pastor David was sharing, that we come expecting to receive something tonight. Well, I'm a firm believer in everything that I do and everything at work or, or uh, just everything that we have to do our part. And the first part is we're here tonight. You're, here, you're there at home watching and you're there expecting. But I'm a firm believer is, is we got to do our part to get what we expect. And tonight as we worship, let's worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. The Lord says in his word that he inhabits the praises of his people. And we are his people. So let's worship him tonight. Let's put in our work and our praise and our worship to him as he responds and gives us what we expect. Amen? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
with the prize. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, God Almighty. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed. Spirit, say it the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Jesus, your word is spirit. Jesus, your word is life. All the promises written in it are mine, all mine. Say the word and still the storm you see. Say the word. I will have your peace, say the word, and I'll come forth again, say the word, and I will live, I will live, I will live.
Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe. That was awesome. The Lord is good. Amen. I'm just in awe at what the Lord can do with, with a willing vessel. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever we offer to the Lord, he will, uh, he will clean up. And, yeah, amen.
You know, uh, any any time we make a move, whether it's a big, huge move towards the Lord or whether it's a sudden move, it causes him to respond. And, you know, very rarely I, I, I try my best in my life not to do anything to, just to get a response out of somebody. Oh, maybe I, I'll joke and maybe I'll say something. Maybe I'll, okay, never mind. But, you know, to know that Father God will respond in an instant at the call of his name, at the shedding of a tear, at the breaking of a heart, at the joy in the same heart, the giving of your life, or even the taking of a life, the Lord, the Lord will respond, and he just waits. You know, when the Bible says that he inclines his ear to us, you know, I think it's much deeper than this. I think, I think it starts here. You know, when the, when the Bible talks about, uh, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and it talks about, it talks about the heart, and, and, and what it's really talking about in a lot of places in the scripture, it, it, if, if you look and if you, if you go to the, to the Greek and the Hebrew, it, it'll talks about the bowels, the bowels. And they're like, um, ew, right? No, 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 but that's what it, it's, you know, I, I feel it. What do you feel? I feel it in the pit, something in the pit of my stomach. You know, when you, have you ever said that or thought that or heard that? from It's in the pit of my stomach. That's what the Word of God is talking about. When it talks about it, it means the, the innermost portion, the innermost part of you. And so I trust that when we make a move to him, that's what I believe it does. Yeah, he inclines his ear. But I think it moves him. It moves him. Has anybody ever told you something or you watched a movie or heard a song or something and it moved you, brought you to tears or made it, 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 it brought you joy or, or made the hairs on a, your arm stand up? I think that when his children come to him, as Joe mentioned earlier, in spirit and in truth, I think that we make his holy hairs on his holy arms stand up. That's just what I think about my God. And, uh, and, I, and I trust that we did that tonight. I really believe we did that tonight. We moved him. And um, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to move you. <clears throat> if you would turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 27, we're going to start in verse 1. Lord's good, Amen. We were so blessed to have Pastor Manuel here this morning in our 8 a.m. service. It was a blessing to see him, and, and uh, I sat in the back, and it was a great message. The battle is the Lord's, right? That was, that was his message. The battle is the Lord's. And um, isn't that so true right now? At all times, the battle is the Lord's. And it was such a blessing to have him. And, and just, to, just so you guys will know, uh, I had a call from Pastor Steve at, um, and I know it was three to four, three minutes to four, and, and I'll explain to you why. Pastor Mary's laughing. He called me and he says, we're here. And I said, you're in Oregon? No, we're in Reading. And I know he said he was going to drive up to Reading and they were going to rest for the night. He says, we're here in Reading. And I said, well, praise the Lord. He says, and there's a cattleman's across the street. And cattleman's opens in three minutes. So I knew it was three minutes till four. And I said, my brother, I love you so much. He says, you go and get the biggest steak that you can have and enjoy it. And he goes, he says, you know what? I, I can't eat the biggest steak anymore. He said, it doesn't mean I'm not going to order it, but I can't eat the biggest steak anymore. I said, well, you know, you just go enjoy. We got a little, some pictures back from John, and, and they're having a good time. So, you know, we thank the Lord for getting them there. We know that there's still, still a drive to get them, and we're trusting the Lord to get them to, to Oregon. And, 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 you know, I asked him to give, uh, give everyone a big, big presence of the Lord, hello, and a hug and a kiss, and to give a special uh, hug around the neck to Brother Don Tudor, you know, 
You know, he's, I talked to Pastor Steve the other day, and he says he's doing, he's doing well. You know, he's doing well. And, and that's all we can ask, amen? You know, God, God, has, the, uh, God has the final say. And uh, we're going to rejoice regardless of, of what happens. Uh, in Psalm chapter 27, verse 1, it's a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. You know, this is, this is a really a beautiful portion of Scripture. And, and this isn't just, you know, I love Scripture. I love Scripture and I love Scripture that that leads you and guides you, right? Because that's what Scripture does. The Bible says that that it, uh, His Word is a lamp unto my feet, and 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 I love that. And I and I love you know I even love the Scripture that spanks me, Joe. You know what I mean? I mean uh, to know that that if I'm in error and, and if I if I read in the Word the correct way, the correction, um, His Spirit is good enough to to guide us that way. But, you know, I, I love the relational scriptures. And, and, and I don't know so much if there's such thing as, as a, a, a theological term of being a relational scripture, but this is a relational scripture. This is a God who knows his son. And this is a son who absolutely knows his God. And so when I read this, it, there's no question as, okay, when I go to church, I'm hoping you hear me. And when I go... Uh, outside your tabernacle, I hope you let me in. And there's none of that. It, it's it's you do this. You do this, and I will do this, and I will do this. And I know because I do this, you will do this. And I know because I do that, you will do that. And I heard you tell me to seek my face, and, and, and your face I will seek. To me, this is just so relational. This is, this is, this is a husband and a wife answering each other's I mean, uh, f completing each other's sentences or, or, or friends saying, you know what I want to go? I know where you want to go. Let's go to, and you both say the same thing at the same time, right? Pinch poke, you owe me a Coke, right? And, and, and so it's just that relational thing of knowing that, oh, Pastor Ray, let's take her to Mimi's because she likes Mimi's or something like that, right? And that's what, when you read scripture, you know, David's got such a keen, keen way of 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 expressing this kind of relationship, but um, so could you, and so can I, and, and it's all about knowing who He is and letting Him show you who He is. See, during times of trial and tribulation and war, the psalmist expresses his sincere confidence in the Lord, and because he knows who the Lord is in his life, he desires to seek Him more and more. Have you ever come across something and, 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 and it's like you bump your head and you say, man, I don't know how to do this. Man, I don't know how to do this. Man, I don't know how to do this. And, and you just kind of walk away from it for a little bit. Have you ever done that? I, I will tell you, I'm like that. I'm like that with like fixing toilets and fixing sinks. My wife the other day, I'm in the room and she's in the bathroom and she's not in the bathroom, bathroom. She's inside of the restroom and, 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 she's, and she's turning on the water, and then I hear, 
No, I hear this. Right? <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And the hot water or the cold water, one of the waters, the hot water, right? It's been, it's stuck in it. I can't, can you, and it was, it was dripping a little bit. And so, you know, I went in there. And my, my cape was flowing in the wind, right? Let me handle that. And I, and I tightened it and it stopped dripping, right? She goes, honey, it's, it's been really, really hard to, to open and to close. And, and so, you know, what can we do about it? And I said, I'll tell you what. So I grabbed a towel and I covered it. I said, now you can't see it. And I walked away. Because I know in my head that I can fix that. I know I can. I absolutely, I'm, I'm almost certain I know what it is. But to get there to do it, to find the time to do it, and then to open it up. And then I open it up, Mary, and I say, oh, my goodness, this shouldn't be here. And so I start fixing that, too. And, oh, my goodness, this shouldn't be. So I start fixing that, too. Before you know it, eight days later, maybe, or eight hours later, whatever, <laughs> I'm blowing my hair up. and I'm, Just call a plumber. Just call a plumber. And it's not because I, I don't have, I have the wherewithal. I've got the tool. I, I have so many brand new tools, Joe, that I bought. So many brand new tools. When I mean brand new, brand new, like nobody's ever used them. You buy them just in case you need them. And then when, when, when there's a pipe that needs to be fixed, and Terry says, hey, remember there was a pipe wrench? Ah. Right? I bought a chainsaw. We talked about the chainsaw, right? I bought it and, and I have yet to use the chainsaw. You know why? Because there's, there's firewood on the side of my house that needs to be cut. And so that's why I bought it. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to cut it. And, and I guarantee you that I'm going to go out and cut it. I, I'm on my skin. If I'm lying, I'm dying. But I just got to get out there to do it. Right? Now that you know all this about me, you know, when I say that David knows the Lord and that causes him to want to seek him more and more and more, I know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but I don't know a lot about a lot of stuff. I know just enough. My neighbor across the street asked me, I forgot to ask you, do you speak Spanish? And I said, I know enough to find a bathroom, to find a taco, and to get arrested. That's the three, right? So I just, I just know kind of enough. But that keeps me from doing some things because I know something about it. But I don't know a lot about it to tackle it. And sometimes that's the case with the Lord. Have you ever been in a situation to where it's a brand new situation? I've never been here before in my life. And, and so what am I going to do? And, 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 and you go to the scripture, you go to, and you look, and you're, and you're nothing, and you look, and you're and nothing, and you look, and Jesus wept, and you look, and, and, and nothing, and, and you look. And, and so you even do, do this, and you look, and nothing. Concordance, and nothing, and searches, and nothing. And you find nothing, and it's just, ah. That can cause a person to dive in even deeper to find that answer. It can also cause a person to stop diving in deeper because they can't find an answer. And so when David says, when, when, when he knows his God so well that he can speak like this, that has to be a lesson to me and it has to be a lesson to you. Not to give up until we know him. Not to give up until we know what he's going to say here. Not to, not to give up until we know that we know. Not to give up. That if, if, if we know he's going to turn left before he even turns left. Not being God, but you know him well. The Lord has instructed, well, I'm not going to read that. But, uh, you know, I have heard the term pursuing God before, and, and, and I don't find that to be accurate. I, 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 may, be, I may be the oddball in the group, but I don't, I don't find pursuing God to be all that accurate of a statement. And, and, and true, we, 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 have to, we follow hard after him. But we're not pursuing him. I, I mentioned this before. 
and I'm not going to mention any names, but I love to watch. And, and listen, please understand, it's not, I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but I, I, I enjoy car chases. And t Terry will wa we'll watch the news, Joe, or we're watching f at Family Feud. It always happens during Family Feud, right? And so you know how old I am because I watch Family Feud, right? All four half hour episodes. And so we're watching Family Feud, and then, and they cut to the chase. And Terry's like, and I, th I think in unison, she's like, oh, and I'm going, yeah. And so we watch this car chase, right? And she's like, oh, no. And I'm like, I'm just watching it. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I, I, most of the time I'm praying. And, and that may sound crazy, but I do. Because I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want, I've seen ch chases where people get killed and, and people get hurt. I, I don't want to see that. I don't. But I love action. I'm a guy. Right? I'm a guy. I don't want to see anybody come shooting people, but maybe a helicopter with a, you know, with some guy coming in a suit and coming down in a, right? something fun, right? So I watch it. But the way they're pursuing the perp, huh? The way they're pursuing the perp is not the way we pursue God. We follow hard after him. We're, we're told in the scripture to, 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 to follow him, to, to, to listen to him, to hear him, to let him lead us and guide us. But we're not ever pursuing him because he's never running from us. He's never running from us. So the pursuit is always, if ever, me running from him, us running from him and him having to pursue us. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like the kid running around the house and the mom's trying to catch him and trying to change his diaper. And boom, there he goes out the front door without a diaper. Right? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever been that? I heard I was that. Right? So, I mean, it's, that's a pursuit. Running after something that doesn't want to be caught. But like I said, Jesus isn't running. He doesn't skip out. He doesn't duck out. He doesn't hide out from anyone. On the contrary, we are the ones who run from him. And he is continuously pursuing us. You know, I mentioned this, uh, a bit of this this morning, but Christianity is the only re religion where our good works, our deeds, our money, our penance, you name it, anything we say or do cannot earn us the way to Jesus. There's only one thing we can say to earn or to at least get us to Jesus, and that is help me, Jesus. That is, I need you, Jesus. That is, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Other than that, there's nothing we can do to get there. He is the only God of gods that seeks out and pursues his people. You know, Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 8 says, While yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. And that, every time I read that, Joe, that, 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 that it, just, it, it kind of takes the air out of me a little bit because I, I know what kind of sinner I was. You know, it d doesn't mean that I, I was any better or any worse than anybody else, but I can only speak for my own life. I'm like, man, when I was doing this or that or this or that or the other, he, he died for me. He died for me so I wouldn't have to do that anymore. And that's so powerful, my God. Through his grace and loving kindness, he pursues us because he loves us. I'm going to read that again. Through his grace and loving kindness, he pursues us because he loves us. That's it. That's, that's it. That's, that's a message all by itself, that he pursues us because he loves us. That's it. There's nothing ever, ever after that. Just believe. I'm read an excerpt from a a book by a gentleman named, uh, named uh, Tim Roll. And the book is called The Magnificent Goodness of God and How It Will Transform Your Life. I've taught on this word before, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to use it a little bit here. There's a word in the Hebrew Bible translated into the English as unfailing love. And, and when you think of unfailing love, what do you think? Okay, let's say we all think of Jesus as unfailing love. After that, what else do you think of? 
What do you think of if I'm, I'm feeling love? I see I'm feeling love here with Daniel, mom right here. I see I'm feeling love with, with Joe and, and Anita. Not as cool as our love, but you know. You know, I see unfailing love between friends. I see unfailing love, right? And, and, and that's the love that we know. That's the love that is tangible to us, whether it's between mother and daughter, whether it's between spouse, mother and... Hi, Mom. Mother and son, right? Her favorite child. Um, regardless of what it is, we know an unfailing love. We've experienced it in our lives. But, but we don't. We don't. We don't unless it's Jesus. See, that word unfailing love is, is from the Hebrew word chesed. Chesed. It could be chesed and it can be chesed. Okay? Um, uh, spelled K-E-S-E-D. C-H-E-S-E-D. It's, I, I, I've, I found it spelled a couple of different ways, but, but it's pronounced chesed in the Hebrew. Get these ladies a parka. Chesed. I don't want to spit all over them. Chesed. That really punctuates the Lord's pursuant nature. The word is so full of meaning that not one single word in the English language can cover the meaning of chesed. I can't capture it. This Hebrew word simply has no equivalent in the English language. It has been translated mercy, love, grace, loving kindness, favor, goodness, loyalty, steadfastness, faithfulness, devotion, constant love, and kindness. Try wrapping that all up into one English word. I tell you all the time that, that, that the English language is so weak. It is so weak. Because I love Jesus. And I love my wife. And I love ding-dongs. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it's, it's like we, we're, our, our, and right, she's looking at me like, 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 you know, no food for you, right? But, I mean, we say that, oh, man, I love that movie. But I love my wife. And I love Jesus. The English language is so weak. But you pull a word, one word out. One word of chesed. Mercy, love, grace, loving kindness, favor, goodness, loyalty, steadfastness, faithfulness, devotion, constant love, and kindness. That's 12 different definitions. The New Strong Expanded Dictionary of Bible Words states that there are that three basic meanings to the word which always interact, and they are strength, steadfastness, and love. The essence of the word is a robust love that never fades or falters. This love is completely reliable and constant. This love manifests itself to us with great mercy, tenderness, kindness, loyalty, grace, and goodness. This love is strong and steadfast. It is an eternal and committed devotion that encompasses all these wonderful expressions of love. This love is unfailing and absolutely faithful. It is devoted, it is devoted love in action. It is a committed love that only exists in a covenant relationship. The word implies personal involvement and commitment in a deep covenant relationship. God has made a covenant with us as his beloved children, sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. This covenant is God's solemn oath and unbreakable commitment, his fierce loyalty and his undying pledge to you as his child every second of every day. A covenant bond is the highest and most committed relationship possible. The covenant represents an unqualified total commitment of God to us as his children unconditionally, completely, and eternally. That's deep. That's deep. The word chesed is mentioned over 200 times in the Old Testament. And I'm going to share a couple of these scriptures with you. I don't, you don't need to turn them. If you want to write them down, you can. <clears throat> but in Exodus chapter 15, verse 13, and, and this was when um, the children of Israel were singing on the other side of the Red Sea. And it says, you in your mercy, or you in your chesed, have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength 
to your holy habitation. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, it says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but show mercy, but show chesed to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 says, Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passes before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness, long-suffering and abounding in chesed and truth, keeping mercy, keeping chesed, for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12 says, Then I shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep you, the cov- will keep with you the covenant and the mercy, or the covenant and the chesed, which he swore to your fathers. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock, in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. Psalm chapter 36, verse 5 says, Your mercy, or your chesed, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep, O Lord. You preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, or how precious is your chesed, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness. O oh, continue your chesed to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. That's pretty cool to me. Because what I did when, when, when I took these scriptures down and, 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 I, and I found the chesed word in these scriptures, I read them back to myself. And I, but I read them back to myself that when it came across the word chesed, I would read the scripture. When I get to the word chesed, I would say chesed, mercy, love, grace, loving kindness, favor, goodness, loyalty, steadfastness, faithfulness, devotion, constant love, and kindness. And I would do that on purpose. I wasn't doing that to play a game. or I, need, I wanted to get everything that he had for me. I wanted to feel everything. And I wanted to experience everything that I could. And it was so great. It was so awesome because... To be able to take that and to embrace that and to devour that and to be showered by that. I'm telling you, there's no better feeling than that. You know? And, 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 if, and, if, and if you're like, oh, yeah, whatever, have someone just tell you, you're so wonderful and you're so beautiful and you're so pretty and, and I love you and you're so awesome and your hair is beautiful and your glasses are awesome and you make banana and a bread cool and you cook good and you bake good and, and just sit there all day long and tell you how wonderful you are. And I know some of us would, would like, okay, yeah, okay, right? Or stop. Or, or gosh, right? We had that the other day. Oh, no, 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 right? But regardless, we, 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 we enjoy hearing these things. And I'm not saying, please, please, everybody gather around and sing praises to my name. That's not what I'm saying. When somebody says, you did a good job, or you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you have a nice shirt, things like that, we, we, we enjoy it. We like, thank you. We like that. Just as just people, right? Well, read these. Go back and read these scriptures tonight and tomorrow. And it's not a challenge or anything, but go back and read them. 
and, and find that list. And if you need that list, I'll give you that list tonight. And, and find that. And, and when you come across the chesed word, and, and if you need, I'll, I'll print up a copy of this and I'll give it to you. And, and, and huh, you're not here. I'll print up a copy and I would give it to you. And when you come across the chesed word, read those 12 definitions. Man, the Lord's going to blow your socks off. God is the tireless pursuer. He pursued Adam and Eve in the, in the, in the, in the garden. I was going to say in the jungle. He pursued Adam and Eve in the garden, right? You know, where are you? They hid from him. He pursued Hagar when she fled from Sarai. That's a beautiful story, by the way. If you have a chance, go back and read about Sarai and, and Hagar. Actually, more about Hagar. Because our God is so good. That she was, she was the, the man-made child, right? She, she, she was the one that, that, uh, that was the, the choice of, of man. But the Lord still honored her and loved her and met her out where she, where she was alone and scared. And her, and her child, she left her child under, under a tree to die and she walked away she, so she wouldn't have to watch him die. And the angel of the Lord met her there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful story. He pursued Gideon in the threshing room floor. He pursued Jacob and then wrestled him near the river of Jabbok. He pursued Jonah in the valley of the great fish. He pursued Elijah when he was hiding in a cave. He pursued Saul when he was traveling on the road to Damascus. And, and he pursued you and he pursued me. And he continues to pursue you and he continues to pursue me. And he will continue to pursue you. And he will continue to pursue me. You know why? Because that's what he is. That's who he is. He's the lover of our souls. Amen. In, the, in 2 Peter chapter 3, where God says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is longsuffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And you know, we believe that scripture. We know that scripture to be for the unsaved, right? He, wants, he doesn't want anybody to perish. But do you know that that same heart that he has for the unbeliever, he has for the believer? I don't want you to go that way. You know? Oh, mom, right? Right? You know, I don't want you. No, no, because I know, right? I, I think we said, I said this to the, and the, and the, and the, and the ever popular because I said so, right? Why can't I go? Because of this and because of that, because of this, because of that. And then when you finally push the right button, because I said so. Right? Because I said so. But you know, his heart is that's his heart for his children. Parents, it's, this, it's if you have that heart for your child, if you have that heart for your friend or for, for a loved one, see, that heart was given to you. That's the heart of God. If you've ever said, because I said so, because you don't want them to be hurt or, 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 or to be killed or to be damaged or, or in any way, that's the heart of God. That is his heart for his children and for those who he wants to be his children. Francis Thompson, in the 1800s, wrote, I think it's really cool, but wrote a, uh, a poem called The Hound of Heaven. And I'm not going to read it all to you, but I'm going to read this portion. It says, I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fl fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind and in the mists of tears I hid from him, and under running laughter, up vistaed hopes I sped, and shot, and, and shot precipitated, adown titanic glooms of chasmed fears from those strong feet that followed, followed after, but with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy, they beat. And a voice beat, more instant than the feet. All things betray thee who betrayest me. 
And that's the hound of heaven. That's, you know, I, I will tell you, and I, I, will be, I will be just honest before you, God and you and everyone who's within the sound of my voice. When I, fir- I first read this in like 1999, and I was so offended. How dare you call my dog, I mean, my, my God, a dog. How dare you liken my Savior to a dog. How dare you? And then I read it again. And then I read it again. And then I read it again. And, and he wasn't. He, he, he was likening him to, to, because a hound, if you ever been hounded by someone, ever been hounded by a bill collector, or hounded by, by, oh, this will just take a second, Mr. Diaz. You know, if I could just get three minutes of your time. And like 48 minutes later, you're going, uh-huh, right? These people hound you. They follow hard after you. They follow after you. They follow after you. Well, this is the hound of heaven. This is who, who Francis Thompson was talking about. The one who will, a, a never-ending pursuit. A never-ending pursuit for you. I love the fact that I know that he would have done this for this if it was just this. You know, we, um, the title of this message is, is Knock, Seek, Find. Knock, Seek, Find. In his word, he, um, the Lord says, I stand at the door and knock. And, and I love this about the word of God. I love the fact the Holy Spirit revealed this to me for me. But he says, I stand at the door and knock. And whoever hears my voice and opens the door. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a second. Because they're not home. No, no. That's not what Jesus did. He didn't go. The Bible says that I stand at the door and knock, and whoever hear my voice, Lucia, Lucia, are you in there? Ma- Mary, Ma- Mary, A- Angie, Angie, I know you're in there. I see you, Angie, your car's out there. Angie, I can see the, the curtains are moving, Angie. He'll just sit there, and 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 he'll wait because he was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. Joe, 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 Jose Luis, okay. Right? Because you know when they call you, Okay, but when they call you by all your entire name, you better come, right? Well, he says, I stand at the door and knock. And whoever hears my voice, so that is my persistent, that is my persistent loving God. Mijo, I know you're in there. And I know you're scared. I know you're afraid. I know you're lonely. I know what they're going to say about you. Because they said it about me. Just open the door. And it says, if you op- those who open the door and invite me in and sup with me. Oh. And that's, that's what my God does. That's what our hound of heaven does. That's what the God, the God that we serve. We, I don't serve him because I love him. I serve him because he first loved me. And then I fell in love with him. I served him because he first loved me. And I came to him tattered and torn and stinky and smelly and all these kind of things. And broken and squeaky and one wheel going this way, right? Like the market basket. And he came in and he says, no problem. 
and he fixed me up. And, and, and he set me out. You know, I, I like to say that, you know, that this place is like the land of misfit toys and the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And, and you know, you've, you've, got, you've got Joe in a box, right? And, and, and you've got the, the cowboy who rides an ostrich, right? And you've got the squirt gun that, that squirts grape jelly, right? And, and you've got, and you've got the, the, the train with the square wheels, right? And you've got the bird that can't fly, right? And you've got all these different toys. At the end of the story, this guy in a red suit, takes these toys and he uses them for the joy and for the goodness of these kids. Okay, oh, there you go, Pastor Dave. He's talking about Santa Claus. Forget it. I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm going to go and I'm going to come. No, 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 no. Because where do you think they got the story from? Where do you think they got the story from? You think they just woke up one morning and said, this is what we're going to do. I've got a hit. No. The ingrained, implanted word of God that fell into someone's heart one day from generation to generation to generation to generation. And then we're talking about broken toys. Well, what do we do with the broken toys? We'll just banish them off to some island. Or better yet, we can find somebody who can do something good with them. Who can use them to make somebody happy. You know, as misfit as we are, the Lord says, I can use them. The Lord said, I can use them. The Lord said, I can use them. And then the Lord said, I will use them. And I will use that one. And I will use that one. But you got to answer the door. You got to answer the door. Joe said something so profound before worship today is that, is that we're, we come expecting from the Lord, but we have to do our part. And you know what our part is? Open the door. Just open the door. You know, we, we, when I was a kid, we used to have this insurance man. And, and, and I, I mean, I was, I was probably six, maybe seven, which would have made my sister like nine or ten. And we would have this insurance man, and he would come to the door, and he would open the door and walk in. Right? Right? And, and my dad wasn't there. My dad was at work. And so it was my mom and my sister and myself, like during the summer or whatever. So we knew that he would come on certain days of certain weeks. So we'd keep on looking, make sure the door was locked. Or you would hear a door close out in the, out in the street and we'd run to the door and lock it. I would run to the door and lock it. He was going to come in. I was a man of this house, right? I would sit on the other side of the screen door going, yes. I come in. No. Why? Mom's, not, mom, mom's, mom, 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 mom's busy. Because you have control over who comes into your house. And it's not any different from the Lord. You have control over who comes in. Seek, knock, get. We seek, we knock, and we get. But he first sought us, he first knocked at the door. And so so my my simple little message to you tonight is if you're in a place tonight where every decision you're making is leading you to the wrong place or your choice in men is like worse than your choice in politicians or you can't find a job or 
your children have are running amok. Or the doctors have tried everything. As much as we're told to seek and knock, know that he's knocking right now. He's knocking at the door of your heart right this second. And all he's asking for you to let him in. Oh, Pastor David, I'm about to stop smoking. No, no you're not. Smoke away, my friend. See, I'm going to get emails all week long for that. Well, he said to smoke away. I think he's, he's leaving. No, 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 no. Here, here, this is what I'm saying. The Lord says, come. Right? He, says, he doesn't say come after you stop smoking, after you stop drinking, after you stop womanizing. He doesn't say anything. He says, come as you are. Come. And I will make you fishers of men. He says, come. So Pastor David didn't say to you know, just smoke as much as you want. Just drink as much. Just, 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 just snort as much as you want. He didn't say that. What Pastor David said is what the Bible says. Come, all ye. Come, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And you know what rest means? You know how tiring this is? You know how tiring that is? You know how tiring this is? Try to just stay up. He will give us rest. He will remove those things from us. So, so anybody and everybody who's listening, give him a shot. Give him a chance. Open the door. Let him in. He will transform your life. All the things that you're looking for are in Jesus. And half the things you find are probably probably won't look a bit like the things you think in your head that you need. But when you get them, you're going to say, oh, man, I needed that. Just like the last piece of the puzzle that you couldn't find. And it was under the, the chair or something, right? I needed that. Jesus is so good. So I just want to pray with you tonight. For all those who can hear my voice, who can see us tonight, whether you're in this place or at home, wherever you may be. Whether it's fear, whether it's terror, because that is so much different than fear. Whether it's uncertainty, whether it's sin, whether it's your unbelief. whether it's a financial problem, a broken marriage, loneliness, depression. I pray tonight in Jesus' name, in the name that's above all other names, the name of Jesus. I pray that you allow him into your life and, and just say, Jesus, just, just say, come in. If you, you Just say, Lord, come in. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. Lord, save me. Lord, heal me. Lord, love me. And he will. We spoke about it before that any move towards him moves him. And so, Father, I thank you so much that you hear my voice. And I thank you, Lord God, that you will heal them, that you will touch them, that you will transform their lives, that you will change their lives that you will bring their children back, that you will mend that broken marriage, that you will remove all fear, all terror, all darkness, all depression, that you will remove that, and you will fill it. You will fill it with your chesed, Lord God, with your unfailing love. Father, we thank you, and we praise you this evening. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We thank you so much for allowing us into your home tonight. I believe and I trust. I know that I know that I know that the Lord changed your life tonight. Nothing I did, nothing I said. It was Jesus and his Holy Spirit that transformed your life. Go tell somebody. Go share it with somebody. 
because he will change their lives too. Amen. So we want to wish you a great, great rest of your evening, a great week. Remind you that Lord willing, we'll be here Thursday at 7 p.m. for our, our on th Thursday, Tuesday, eh, Tuesday, Thursday, right? The first day with the tea. Tuesdays at 7. I'm glad she's here because she's, no, Tuesday. Tuesdays at 7. And um, have a great, have a great time. Tell people that Jesus changed your life. We love you. God bless you. Have a good evening.